Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, girls and gentle pods and welcome back to the shed. As you can see, today we are back in the shed. Uh, that's because I'm doing a small job to move on with Morty's progress. Unfortunately, for the last six weeks I've been through, um, started as a tickly cough, progressed through bronchitis, Covid, galloping dog rot and God knows what else. Uh, I'm over it pretty much now, although you can possibly hear that I've still got a slightly croaky throat. But overall, I'm doing a lot better and we can get back on with some of the jobs. Today we're just doing a small job. The rear springs on Morty are semi-elliptic leaf springs. The front ends of the springs are mounted on metalastic bushes. They're rotten, shot, the rubber's disintegrated, they're all knackered. The rear eye of the spring is mounted with a plain rubber bush. Now they're all shot as well. I managed to get replacement metalastic bushes for the fronts, but I haven't been able to get, what I wanted to do was put polyurethane bushes in, but I haven't been able to get any. Well, I haven't been able to find any. So I'm going to make some. Now these are only for the rear to replace the plain rubber bushes, um, simply because the front ones are quite small in diameter. Um, and it, it would be quite tricky to make those, I think. So, what I've done is I've 3D printed a mould, um, and I'll show you, and we'll get on with it. Right, so what we have here is a three-piece mould, and the reason I've done it in three pieces is I saw somebody else do a video of making polyurethane bushes in a 3D printed mould, and he had a lot of difficulty getting them out of the mould because it was a one-piece mould. So what I've done is I've printed it in three pieces so that the mould can be separated to release the bushes. So there's a centre pin that will create the hole at the centre of the bush. That slots into one half of the outer mould. The other half goes on like so. And then to keep them apart, what I need to do is just line up the bottom so that they're flush. So it's nice and smooth and it won't create steps in the finished product. And then a simple Jubilee clip over the bottom. Just uh, The centre pin has got a very slight raised ridge around the very edge of it. So I just want that to protrude slightly from the mould to allow that to clamp up nice and flush. Now that's slightly cocked. That looks better. Right, they are now pretty good for flush. Very slightly off there. That's nice and flush, that's nice and flush. The centre pin's protruding slightly so it's not, that ridge around the bottom is not holding them apart. As you can see, I've made it so the centre pin protrudes further than the top end. Just to keep the top part together, I'm going to put a couple of wraps of insulation tape around it. Just so that there's no gap for the polyurethane mixture to run out of. So that's it, that's the mould prepared. So I just need to mix up the polyurethane. I've got a mixing pot, it's just the top of a spray can. Small stick to mix it, and this is the polyurethane mixture. So it's uh, Duraflex 85 PU, they call it casting rubber uh, for making polyurethane moulds for making other stuff in but finished properties should be about right for suspension bushes we'll find out obviously I'm not going to need a huge amount um, and it's a 50-50 mix so the same volume of each component it's going to be a bit tricky to measure out Ah. We can 
do it by weight. So probably only want a few grams of each. I'm going to go with nine grams of each for this one and we'll see how that pans out. And there we go, 18 grams. I don't suppose you can see that. But that's uh, that. So now we mix that up. And just very carefully. Pour that into the mould. And that looks pretty good. Yes, that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Right, I've just got to leave that to cure. Um, don't know what the curing time is. <coughs> Oh, it claims demolding time one hour. So, uh, should be able to come back to that fairly soon. Unfortunately, when I started to record this, the battery on the camera died. So, um, I've taken the tape off, I've taken the Jubilee clip off, and with a bit of prying with a screwdriver and a thin blade in the gap, I've managed to get one side of the mould to separate and that looks pretty good. Now all I've got to do is get the other half of the mould to separate from it and get the pin out of the centre. It's looking pretty good and the polyurethane feels a similar sort of hardness to other poly bushes I've used on vehicles in the past. It's not the end of the world if the mould does get damaged beyond use again. It would be nice if I can get the parts out without destroying the mould. Um, but it's not the end of the world if it does get destroyed because it's an hour and a half and about top and tape is worth a PLA to print a new three piece mould. Yes. Right, so that's that out of the mould. And I think that mould is going to be perfectly good enough to use again. So that's a bonus. Now all I've got to do is get that centre pin out of it. put a small screwdriver up between the centre pin and the polyurethane bush and that's looking quite promising. Might need to try and do the same at the other end just to break its grip. Voila! A perfectly reusable mould and quite a nice little bush. It's got a good feel to it. I just need to trial fit that in the spring. I haven't got the spring here. That's down in the main workshop. Uh, and as soon as today's Christmas Day, I won't be doing that today. But um, as soon as I can, I'll take that down, do a trial fit in the spring and the shackle pin through there, and if that's all good, I'll mould another one. 
Right, so I just popped down to the workshop quickly just to try this bush in the spring. I've knocked the old bushes out and I've just given that uh, cavity a quick clean up with a wire brush and an electric drill. So we'll see if this bush fits now. Oh, perfect fit. And the shackle. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. When I assemble it, I'll put some silicon grease on the shaft of the shackle so that it can rotate freely. That is an absolutely perfect fit. Right, I'm very happy with that. I can go ahead and make the other three now. Right, so onto the springs. I've done the bushes, and so uh, they're all done. I had to do eight, I was mistaken. The swinging shackle mount in the chassis is not phosphor bronze. It is on the Mark I, but on the Mark II, they switched to rubber bushes. So those are what goes through the chassis and the same bushes in the springs. So I've got all the bushes done, so I just want to check that they are harder than the original rubber bushes. So this is a tyre durometer, this measures the hardness, the shore hardness of rubber. So if I just press that pin against the surface, I'm getting 71. Did you know that again? And now one of the new bushes, I'm getting 94. So, quite significantly stiffer than the originals, so it'll give better axle location. Now, another issue I came across is the silent block metal elastic bushes for the front end of the springs. So, I bought some new ones in, and that's the front end of the spring. Now, that should be a press fit in there, but as you can see, it's not, it's got clearance. That won't work, because that should be press fit should be tight in there so that the rubber flexes not that spinning and rotating. The reason it's sloppy like that is simply that I've sandblasted these spring components and removed all of the rust that was in there. So the old ones were actually held in just with rust and I've proved that by measuring the diameter of that, cleaning one of the old ones up, measuring the diameter and it's exactly the same. So these are the correct ones, it's just that the Springs have rusted away. So what to do about it? New springs? Nah, we don't need that. What I've done is just turned up some sleeves on the lathe, one for each spring, and that will press in there nicely. So I'll take that over to the vise, press that in, and then we're good to go. Right, excuse the mess of the bench. I never tidy this bench up. Right, all I'm going to do is use a socket that's a decent size fit for that. Pop that in the vise and just wind that in. And that's flush to there. It needs to come a little bit further. So if I just pop a bigger socket on that side. So there we go. The bush is in the spring and it's a nice tight fit. Nice and simple. Right, we can now assemble the springs. Back to the bench. Right, so I've got all my components laid out. I've got the primary leaf with the stud in the centre. And three of the leaves have got rubbing pads. Now they originally had rubbing pads. By the time I got to this vehicle, they'd all disappeared, they'd worn away. I've 3D printed some new ones in PLA, which is a basic 3D printer filament. I don't expect them to last very long, but it's more to prove the point that they need to be there. Because um, you can see on that one there, you can see the circle where the original rubbing pad was and where it had worn away and it was just the metal on metal. So I've popped all of those in and I've just given them a light smear with silicon grease, 
plastics work better with silicon grease, silicon base greases. So that one goes on next. And that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So that, that spacer goes on next. So press that down, that will go on, and then I can get the nut and washer on. And then I can tighten that nut up. Before I tighten the door away, I'm going to lie that on each side just so that I can make sure all of the leaves are in line. Tighten that up. Doesn't need to be massively tight, that's why I'm only using a short ratchet so that I don't over tighten it and break the bolt or strip the threads. It is only a quarter inch bolt. So the next components are the metal straps. They go at the end of the third leaf and fifth leaf. They are a bit bent, but you have to bend them to open them up to get them off the spring and to put them back on the springs. So I'm going to start with the fifth leaf one, the deeper one. So I'm just going to slide that off the edge of the table. Now these have a rubber strip around the spring itself that the strap goes around the outside of the rubber so it's not rubbing metal on metal. So if I pop that on there like that, put the rubber inside and if I just put a clamp Cross like so, I can squeeze them together, make sure that rubber is in place, and then I can pop the bolt in and it's not and washer. And again, they're only quarter inch bolts, so they don't need huge tightening torques. That's that. The only remaining thing to do is to put the polyurethane bushes in this end and then you just press in my finger like so and then the shackle can go through if I turn that that way we want the shackle to go the opposite way to the other one so I want it to go that way through so I'm just going to give that shackle pin a wipe with the sink the silicon grease We'll just allow that shackle to spin freely in the bush and not squeak. If you put, if you assemble polyurethane bushes without grease, they squeak. I'm just going to pop the clamping plate on the end, put it the right way around your tool, and the nuts and washers. So, and that's the springs assembled, they're ready to go on the axle. Right, so to assemble the spring and onto the axle, first of all, pop these rubbers into the plates, one goes above and one goes below the axle. I'm sorry about the background noise, there's some heavy plant outside doing some fairly serious construction work. Now because Morty is a competition vehicle, the suspension is lowered. This is an inch and a quarter lowering block. So that sits onto the axle. Make sure that 
raised blob locates into that hole. These, move the spring into shot. These plates and rubbers go over those studs, one top, one bottom. Rubber to the spring, plate otherwise. And it, as you assemble it, make sure that you put the spring shackle, the swinging shackle, to the rear of the spring, to the rear of the axle. So lift that U-bolt up. You have to pop this one in first because it goes through the bracket to hold the bump stop on the top side of the axle. So just slide that down, pop that through. The other U-bolt, the outer one, you can get through fairly easily. Just line that up. Tap that up into place. Make sure those U-bolts are sitting in the grooves on the top side of the axle. Then there's the bottom plate this mounts the bottom of the shock absorber. So that goes on like so, with the shock absorber mounting to the rear and inboard. Flat washer on each. And then the nuts. The one thing that I have done, which I probably didn't mention in any of the other videos, is that all of the fixings, all of the nuts and bolts and studs, I've run either a die nut down the studs and bolts, or in the case of the nuts, I've run a tap through them just to clean the threads up, get rid of any grot and rot that's in there so that they work nicely. Any fixings that were beyond redemption have been disposed of and replaced with new ones. Just as you're tightening these down, make sure that everything's seated properly in the right place. And try to tighten them down. Try to tighten them down evenly. So that you've got the same amount of thread sticking through. And then finally tighten them up by hand because you've got better feel of how tight it is. Guns like that are great for just taking it down the majority of the way. That's a fairly lightweight gun, it doesn't impose a lot of torque. Again, I couldn't find a specific torque for these nuts. They are nylocks, so they're not going to come undone. Now, some people say nylocks should always be replaced. I've been doing this kind of work over 40 years. I've reused nylocks left, right and centre, and I've never had one come undone. So, I don't see a problem with it. So that's that one assembled. I'll assemble the other side to suit, to match. Um, again, I'm not going to bother videoing that, because it's the same as this, just mirror image. And then the axle is ready to go back under the car. Although I have found one slight problem with that. I've got some fairly hefty corrosion in the near side rear swinging shackle mount in the chassis. In fact, the bottom, of, the bottom of the chassis is completely rotted out. So I'm going to have to get the magic glue gun out on that. I'll show you that in a new video, um, which I'm hoping to make this weekend, when it's a bit quieter. Um, but for now, that's about it with this. I'll build up the other side, as I say, and then the axle's ready to go back in. I hope you found this interesting. Um, Hopefully 
perhaps even helpful, informative, and all things being equal, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.